Okay, what are we looking at here? Um, I was going to walk through my process of painting textures in Procreate because you know, I'm very familiar with Procreate already as an illustrator and I'm getting into um, Blender, but I'm like, ah, oh, the Blender texture painting is pretty intimidating. So this is just a pretty simple way to send your models to Procreate, paint on them, and then send the texture back to Blender to use in your shader. Um, so this is one I textured last night. It's a little officer character from a short I'm working on. And to give you a really quick overview of UV unwrapping, I'm just gonna do this body right here and I'm hiding the hands because that's a little more complicated. I'm hiding the neck because who cares? But basically, I'm going to hit 3 and A to select everything. Go into my UV editing workspace. Hide that head. So here's what it looks like, how I've unwrapped it right now. Everything's nice and flat. But without the seams on it, I've taken off all the seams and then I'll hit three to go in face mode, right click, come down to UV unwrap. I usually always do unwrap minimum stretch. Whoa, what the heck are we looking at? This looks like every single UV is contained in this little rat's nest right here because obviously this is not how you UV unwrap. So what you need to do is make some cuts. Like imagine this is a giant piece of fabric and you're now attempting to make it lie flat. And so you just find like, go back to my edge selection, and I'll select the waist, right click, mark a seam. Then I know I want my boots to be a different shape, so I'll say mark seam. Okay, so now I have it split up between pants, shirt, boots. I'll select everything, unwrap, and yeah, there's my different islands. I have something that's pants, something that's shirt, something that's boots, but still unusable. So, what I like to do for the pants is to find this kind of the same way that you would have on a pair of actual pants. The seams are usually on the inside and outside, but for here we can just do inside. Usually it's, it's easier to add these seams in before you apply the mirror modifier just to save yourself a little bit of time but so that looks good right click mark seam oh my gosh but this is giving me a little extra one so I'll clear the seam anyway you can see what I'm doing I'll add a seam to the bottom of the foot so that you can think of the sole as a totally different shape. Just coming through with scissors. And then I'm going to chop right down the back here so that it lines up where it meets in the legs. And then mark that seam. Okay, so now three for face selection, A for all, right click unwrap minimum stretch and now you can see the shoes the boots soles pants are all nicely flattened out i can do the same thing with the shirt probably the easiest way for stuff like this is to just grab that you know I'm thinking about like what seems are going to be not as visible so if a character usually has their arms at their sides this way right click mark seam 
And I think that might be all we need to do. 3A, right click, unwrap minimum stretch. Yeah, so there we go. That's pretty much all there is to it. Um, and then when you're in your UV editing window over here, there's an option to press four for island mode, which is how you can just you know select any of these shapes as an individual little object. And then this is where I would just you know rotate negative ninety. Um, I can't really tell what's the front or the back of this shirt, but I guess if that's the elbow, then this is the front. Rotate ninety. Just kind of orient things in a way that it makes sense. Like, could I put my boots there? Nothing's overlapping. Anyway, so that's. I'll unhide the other geometry and yeah that looks pretty much how I had it where's the other oh these these guys need to get moved anyway you just find a way so that nothing's overlapping everything's kind of um, you know you can get really crazy and try to make it as little negative space as possible but I think in general, we're going for speed and ease, not uh, maximum efficiency. Once you have your model unwrapped, and you can have modifiers. So like, for example, I like to pose my models with the rig I'm using just so that they're in a little bit more interesting of a pose while I'm painting on them. If this is literally the only thing in your scene, you don't need to select it, but I've just gotten in the habit of selecting everything I want to export. Um, double check to make sure that the materials are pretty clear, like there's only one material for this object, one material for that object. I'm not totally sure how it works, but I think that making those objects different materials will create two different textures in Procreate, which helps with texture size because you're limited to like a 2048 by 2048 texture, I think. And this way you can use two of those, one for the face, one for the body. Anyway, select, select, file, export. And then we're looking for the OBJ. I don't know what wave front means. And then I'm going to go to my desktop, save this as officer2.obj. And then here's where you can check selected only to say, I only want to export the objects I have selected. Everything else I just leave the same because let's keep it easy and export. And we'll see if it worked. Yep, here we've got our two files. Um, the material, who cares? I don't know how to use that, but I will right click the, or you can just check to see if it's in there. Yep, that looks like my guy. Right click, share with my mom, no, with the airdrop, my iPad. And do 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 do. So here in the iPad, it just says, "Yep, we've we've just received your file that we have no idea what to do with." It's giving me a quick option to open it in Nomad, but I will scroll over to Procreate. Importing. Here we go. And so. One super compulsive thing that I always do is go into the 3D, edit the things. Because I'm doing like flat light kind of stuff, I'll just delete all the lights. 
change the environment to the studio at a hundred percent that just gives it like a nice nice flat white kind of there is some shading but just gives me a more uh, canvasy kind of feel and then also you can add a reference which does a couple different things you can have a 3D view, you can look at your 2D texture as you paint, or you can import an image from your camera roll, Zoop. which is super nice because if you've done a design for your character like this, now you can just color pick directly from that. So I can say, what's this skin tone? All right, so layers, this gets a little confusing, but basically every object has its own layers and I can add a new layer. First thing I like to do is just drag and drop because now you can see on alpha, I have the entire shape of the UVs kind of illuminated. Um, because it doesn't bring in that UV map with it. I used to, you know, like import the UV map and line it up, but this to me is my faster workaround to just say, you can just press on the object you want to, add another layer, drag and drop. Okay, and now I can quick do, let's see, we'll grab, da, da, da. just kind of marking saying that's where the hands are anyway this is all to say it's working cool one thing you might notice is that some of these brushes have um, shininess to them and that's usually in the brush settings in materials it'll say roughness amount so you can go in and change that if it's annoying you there we go nice matte or if you do the kind of metallic roughness stuff in Blender too, that's kind of nice to be able to work with it in here. But another workaround is you click on that little cube and it brings up your three different layers for color, roughness, metallic. So you can just, for roughness, fill that entire layer with white and now it'll be matte. And then if you're going to add color with anything, just only use the color image and it won't affect the roughness. Anyway, now you can come over to the 2D texture, change your reference to the 3D. Uh, where am I? I can get a little pencil. This is, this is terrible. I'll show you some uh, examples of the ones that I tried hard on so that you know that I can do things. So I really like how this guy came out. Uh, and that's a similar kind of thing where I've got this kind of five o'clock shadow on a layer here. I have this scar. This is just some random dirty texture. There's my blush. Uh, another downside is you cannot export a PSD version of this. You know, it would be nice to be able to just, uh, oh, this is terrible. It'd be nice to be able to, you know, export the nice textured stuff but then like also edit the colors as layers in Photoshop but for now that's not an option um, but all I do now since I already have the model in Blender and the UV map matches I'll just go to share Way down at the bottom it says share textures PNG. I will airdrop that to myself. 
here it comes and it just shows up as this nice little folder of all of your color metallic roughness maps but we don't need any of that we can just go into the shading and say what is this one the head so instead of using this old texture that I had before I'm just going to plug that one in oh yeah and there you go texture painting in procreate